Ashwaubi Newt and work in Treaty 1 land, the traditional land of the Anishinaabe, Cree, and Dakota peoples, the homeland of the Métis Nation. We also acknowledge Shoal Lake 40 First Nation, who generously provide us with clean drinking water. We are grateful for their stewardship of this land, their protection of the water, and their hospitality, which allows us to live, work, and serve God the Creator here. Good morning and welcome to St. Paul's as we join together to celebrate this Sunday morning and this worship time together. And we do want to acknowledge that we have a new family with us this morning, the Brown family. And the youngest little one that you see running around, he's two today. So be sure to wish him a happy birthday. <laughs> we'll continue now in our service with our gathering hymn of worship the Lord. Thank you. 
counsel by words without knowledge. Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its faces sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together? and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy. Listen for the leading of the Spirit. Thanks Thanks to God. Psalm 104. The refrain is, O Lord, be not far from me. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, how excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and splendor. You wrap yourself with light as with a cloak and spread out the heavens like a curtain. You lay the beams of your chambers in the waters above. You make the clouds of your chariots. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers and flames of fire your servants. You have set the earth upon its foundations. Oh, that it never shall move as any time. O oh, Lord, be not far from me. You covered it with the deep as with a mantle. The waters stood higher than the mountains. At your, rebu you, at your rebuke, they fled. At the voice of your thunder, they hastened away. They went up into the hills and down to the valleys beneath, to the places you had appointed for them. You set the limits that they should not pass. They shall not again cover the earth. O oh Lord, Lord, be not far from me. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. Hallelujah. O oh Lord, Lord, be not far from me. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Mephibosheth. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Ephesodet. Listen for the leading of the Spirit.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant. But it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of Christ. Praise Praise you. Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeeming. Amen. I constantly have to remind myself I'm only allowed to go so far down the congregation, <laughs> or I could just simply go off camera. <laughs> when I was listening to Bill read the gospel passage this morning, and it was talking about servants, I'm thinking, hmm. Wouldn't mind one once in a while. <laughs> but when, of course, Jesus refers to that in this particular passage, he's talking about going from power that people are seeking to being a servant, to being the one who serves, and to being the one who humbles themselves. But what really was the role of the servant during Jesus' day? One of the things we know about being the servant was that, yes, they were indeed definitely there to serve. They were there to serve the people that they lived with, that they were maybe owned by, whatever the case might have been. But these people had worked themselves into positions of trust. And so they were in a household, perhaps they saw to the bath time of the master or the mistress, but they would certainly have been there for parts of the intimate pieces of the lives of the people in whose household that they belong. They would have been bearers of many of the secrets that they were expected to hold. And so when Jesus says to his disciples that in order to be the one who is doing the work of God in this world, he said you need to take the foundations that you have where we believe that, you know, the foundation works and the word comes from on high, and then it trickles down to the masses. It's that old triangle. And while we try to convince ourselves the old triangle is gone, it still permeates part of our psyche. So when Jesus is telling the disciples that you won't be like the other people in society, you won't be like the Gentiles, and you won't be like those who seek power and lord it over people who are less powerful or poorer or who are struggling more. He says, you're going to be different. You're going to take the construct of society and you're going to tear it down. Now that's not easy to get into our minds because we know that when Jesus talked about this over 2,000 years ago, we know the construct of society still works in the same formula where it kind of 
comes from on high and it trickles down. And yet he says to us, that is not what servant ministry is about, and that is not what I've come to bring to the people. I've come to bring a new formula, and I want you to take away everything that you've built before, and I want you to build something new. And so the brothers who have come to him to ask for these important positions on the right and on the left, they're seen as positions of power because they're right next to that most powerful person, you know. And who would be better confidence than the people right there on either side of you? And they want this so bad they've been bold enough to go ask for it. The other disciples, when they hear it, they're mad. They are justly angered that two people would want to sit themselves apart. And then they listen to what Jesus has to say. And he says to them, there is no setting apart in the building of the kingdom. The left hand and the right hand seating is not mine to grant. Can you drink the cup from which I drink? And he says, I don't know if you can or not, but you're going to. You're going to, because persecution is going to happen, and they are all going to find their way to certain kinds of deaths. And so when all of this unfolds, we ask ourselves, so how do we take that, since we haven't been very good about deconstructing that kind of hierarchy in our own society, how do we take it? Can we do it? And the simple answer to that is yes, we can do it. We have to have the will to do it, and there has to be a certain amount of nerve to do it. But I want you to think about the life of Mother Teresa. She believed in a call to servanthood. She went to the balls of Calcutta, and she served the people that everybody else walked by, and they were virtually invisible to them. They were the lepers, they were the lowest in the caste system, and they were untouchables. And in fact, that was what they would refer to. And when Mother Teresa ministered, she didn't ask, what caste system do you belong to? She saw a person who needed to be loved. When Mother Teresa ministered, she did not say, are you Christian? She saw a person in need of humanity. And when Mother Teresa reached out to those people, she didn't do it with an ulterior motive, thinking, well, years down the road, I'm going to win the Nobel Peace Prize. But she ministered with compassion because she believed that was the example that she was called to live based on what she had read and what she had learned and the life of service and servanthood that she had been called to. She should have been great. She was great, but she was always, first and foremost, a servant. So Mother Teresa shows us, imagine the word of that woman, she shows us that indeed living the life of the kingdom that Jesus envisioned can be done. But the question is, do we have the will to do it and do we have the nerve to do it? Because living the life of the kingdom means we deconstruct everything that's been built in our minds through the years of how it's supposed to work. And Jesus says we do not lord things over each other like the Gentiles do, but we encounter one another, we serve one another, we have compassion for one another, no ulterior motives, except to be with one another and to bring the best message and the best example of the gospel and the kingdom that Jesus was trying to build. And when we strive to do those things with no benefit to ourselves, then we are indeed on the path to figuring out what it is to be a servant of all to those that we have encountered and those that are in need of ministering and compassion. And then we begin to build on the message that Jesus grew with his disciples. Not so that we grab power so that we can do more serving, but so that we do serving so that those who are powerless know that there is hope, there is compassion, 
and there is love in this world because we epitomize it in the service that we offer. No strings attached, of no benefit to us in any way, except that it is what God calls us to each and every day. Amen. I confess, our affirmation this morning is much different than we've done in the past. <laughs> But it's, there is some fun in it, and there is even a reference in it to we the children. <laughs> so, here we go with our affirmation of faith. We believe in God, in Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit, and in you, and in me. We believe the Holy Spirit has freed us to worship as a community. We believe the Holy Spirit works through balloons and ministers, daisies, and weekly children. Tiny symbols and silence, drama and the unexpected, choirs and bands, touching and praying, spontaneity and planning, faith and doubt, tears and laughter, leading and supporting, hugging and kneeling, dancing and stillness, applauding and giving, creativity and flying, words and listening, holding and letting go. Thank you and help me. Scripture and hallelujahs, agonizing and celebrating, accepting and caring, through you and through me, through love. We believe God's Holy Spirit lives in this community of dancing, hand holding people, where lines of age, politics, and lifestyles are crossed. We believe in praising God for life. We believe in responding to God's grace and love and justice for all people. We believe in the poetry within each of us. We believe in dreams and visions. We believe in old people running and children leaving. We believe in the kingdom of God within us. We believe in love. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, teacher, provider, this is what you want us to learn, not the world's wisdom, but God's. And so we pray, awaken us to our need of you in our lives. Give us your life. Move us with sorrow for the sorrow of the world. And you will make us strong through our fears. Give us the humility to admit our failures. And you will bring treasure out of them. Make us hungry for justice as we work to eradicate hunger for all. And you will give us food at last. Help us to see others through your eyes, that our vision will again and again be yours. And you Today we we remember in prayer David Newman, who is um, facing surgery, and Evelyn, and we ask for God's presence in their lives. And we give thanks today for the Brown family joining us this morning, and especially for Doha, who is two years old today. Can you stand up, Doha, so we can see you? <laughs> Thanks be to God. And we wish many blessings of God, uh, God's life upon Doha and all his family. Mm -hmm.
Show us how to practice what we preach. And we will be good and God in everyone. Support us in standing firm for truth and justice, even when it costs. Amen and amen. And why don't we stand up for the peace? <laughs> you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. The peace of our God, Jesus, in Jesus, be with us all. And also with you.
say the prayer with the gifts together. Eternal God, your word inspires our faith. May we offer you our praise, trust you in all things. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God, our Creator. Give us right to our thanks and praise. Holy God, lover of creation, we give you thanks and praise, for in the ocean of your steadfast love you bear us and place the song of your spirit in our hearts. When we turn from your love and defile the earth, you do not abandon us. Your spirit speaks to Huldah and Micah, the prophets, sages, and saints in every age, to confront our sin and to reveal the vision of your new creation. Joining in the song of the universe, we proclaim your glory singing. Let us pray.
this bread to share in the body of Christ. Today, Christ meets us at the table. Today, salvation comes to everyone, everywhere. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. God of peace, you have nourished us in the sacrament of the body and blood of Christ. May we who have taken holy things keep faith in our hearts and lives. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. His power working in us can defend the living more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord Jesus Christ, who walks on wounded feet, walk with you to the end of your road. May the Lord Jesus Christ, who serves with wounded hands, help you to serve one another. May the Lord Jesus Christ, who loves with a wounded heart, be your love forever. Look for the face of our Lord Jesus Christ in everyone that you meet, and may they see his face in you. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. I do have a few announcements. First, let me offer our thanks to our violinist. I want to call her Fiddler. <laughs> That's my East Coast piece. <laughs> but Shelley has graciously come and brought her violin to add to the music here this morning. And so, our great thanks to you for coming and offering your talents and music with us in our worship today and enhancing that time together. As you heard via the monkey mail, and as you got from the news from the office from Patricia on Friday, and as you discovered, if you didn't already know, as you walked in through the doors this morning, that we have opted for um, choice number one that the provincial government gave us, and that was to require proof of full vaccination at the door. Um, please keep your card with you as we will continue to check um, every Sunday at least for the next little while, and we, we're not wanting to keep paperwork on all of that in the office, but then we don't know if that might not be a little bit easier to keep a bit of paperwork. So for now, we're just going to continue on scanning the curves. It doesn't take long, um, so we'll just continue that route for the time being. Calendars are ordered. Our church calendars are ordered. According to the email from UPS, they're supposed to be here sometime between noon and 5.30 tomorrow. <laughs> I always love it when they give me these <laughs> big wide appointment times. Chances are they'll come to the hall door, I'll be in the office, and we still won't get them. I thought I can arrange another date. If I wanted to arrange it at a more convenient time, like you know, on morning time, um, then there's going to be an extra surcharge on that, so I thought we're going to leave that. <laughs> I'll let them miss me and then have to come back. Um, so, but calendars will be arriving this week. We will have them available in the back. You don't have to put your name on a list, but if you have your name on a list at the office, then that's also most helpful and they'll be put aside for you. And I think they're $5 each, if my memory serves me correct. I don't think they've actually gone up in price. One of the few things that have, haven't been used in many years, but give it time. Now, we got a volunteer to help with Romeo. And Romeo, the Romeos are meeting. It's already been set up uh, Wednesday, November the 10th, 12 noon at Smitty's on Femina Highway. Um, if you're planning to attend, Richard Kildeen would like him to let him know because he needs to let the, re uh, the restaurant know of the number for seating purposes that will be attending. And a reminder to those who are considering it or planning to go that you do need to be fully vaccinated in order to get into a restaurant in Manitoba. So make sure you bring your vaccination cards with you, but do get in touch with Richard and let him know that you're planning to attend. Karen, did he say Smitty from Pemina? He says, 2835 Pemina Highway. It's the one for ourselves. So okay, I didn't know there was more than one, but <laughs> I don't know Smitty. What do I know? It's the one that they used to have that Oh, so it's the usual spot. All right, good to know. Um, but um, while I have a Romeo, I need one or two persons that might be interested in taking that property. And it's not quite a, as catchy a phrase to say, wherefore art thou property manager? 
But our property does need a volunteer in order to oversee this huge plant that we have and the things that need to be done here. Doug has graciously slid back into the role, but he's not wanting it. Um, so, so if there's a volunteer there who has an interest in property, please let us know. Office hours are going to change. Patricia has been coming in from 8 to noon, and with her move now over off of Henderson Highway somewhere, and her partner's new job that's taking him off of Walden somewhere, she's going to be coming in at 8.30 instead. So the office hours are going to move by half an hour. It's going to be 8.30 to 12.30. So it's not going to be a great change, but it's a little change. So uh, just to let you know that. And then, are there any other announcements? Tim has I just wanted to offer thanks to the corporation uh, for the difficult process of deciding to go with a vaccination mandate. In my family, I have a fairly seriously compromised, immune compromised person, and so I really appreciate it. I want to thank the corporation for that.